Hi, my name is Tim Campbell, board advisor to The Amazing Humanic. We're here with a fantastic interview for you, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Suzanne Chiesty, who is the CEO and founder of FinTech Circle. He's going to talk to us about mentoring, the massive change in the industry, and maybe a little bit about our holidays too. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, Tim? I'm really good. You look amazing. You've been on holiday, yes? I just came back from Austria, actually. Oh. So it was lovely there. Oh, how long were you out there for? For two and a half weeks. I'm very so. jealous. I'm very jealous. But yes. you brought the sun back. So in the, we're now in September. Um, lots is happening in your world. For, for the audience members who don't know, talk to us about FinTech Circle. Yes. So FinTech Circle, we are a global community of FinTech entrepreneurs, of startup founders, of investors, and lots of financial services professionals. You know, overall, we're about 75,000 people globally. And our focus is peer-to-peer -peer engagement. And we mainly focus on three things. One is investing. So we try to help startups to get the right money, you know, find, helping them find angel investors. Uh, secondly, we focus on education. So we wrote the FinTech book last year, you know, which has become a, a global bestseller now. So it's, it's amazing. really, yes, really, we're very, really happy it's now available uh, across five languages, you know, in 107 countries. So it's all about fintech education. And the third pillar is our fintech consulting advisory business, where we work with established companies, helping them uh, either building up fintech ecosystems, you know, via open banking platforms, uh, or just advising them on their fintech strategy. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. I've, I've, I've gone through the book. It, it talks very clearly about auditing everything, making sure everything is clearly articulated. So you've been talking about the change in fintech industry for many, many years. Back in 2014, I remember yes. seeing one of your talks, advising the banking industry about the transition that's happening. Do you think they've caught up yet? Uh, it's a great question, Tim. You know, I think not yet, to be honest. You know, I remember when, because I, you know, I worked in banking. I mean, I actually worked for a fintech company 20 years ago. Yeah, you were in Silicon you know, Valley, were I was you? in Silicon Valley, yeah. exactly. And at that time, you know, fintech didn't exist. It was just a technology company, you know, supplying uh, the stock markets in the world. They are fintech solutions, basically. And then I joined the banking sector and worked there, you know, for, for 15 years. And most people in banking, I think, do not yet appreciate the power of technology mm. and do not yet see what is coming uh, their way, our way, you know, because the, the, the whole industry is being completely changed, turned upside down, almost what happened with uh, the music industry, you know, the entertainment industry in the last decades. And that's what's, what's hit, you know, the financial services sector now. And, um, and I think over the last three years, what I've seen is there's more understanding, you know, more interest. There are even banks who say we're not a bank anymore. You know, we are a fintech company, <laughs> yep. you know, BBVA. Yes. announced that last year um, and that's very I think encouraging you know people realize we need to change but it's not easy no but you've seen the growth of peer-to-peer -peer bank peer-to-peer -peer lending services yes. and now the banking industry is starting to think oh this is my territory now yes. maybe it's time we start to look at is the old way of doing banking going to survive though in this new blockchain age mm, I would say you know the old way of banking um, has got its strengths but it also has got its weaknesses, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I, if I start with the strengths, you know, I think we learned a lot of, from our mistakes within banking, you know, in terms of preventing, um, I mean, going to into capital markets now, you know, if you trade, you know, mm. how to prevent front running, yeah. you know, how to prevent uh, insider dealing, you know, market manipulation activities, yeah. all those things now, you know, should be applied to the new blockchain world, mm -hmm. to the ICOs. Yeah. Uh, so I think we should not ignore what we have learned the hard way, yeah. you know, in financial services and apply this knowledge to our new world, you know, of cryptocurrency trading ICOs. On the other hand, there are lots of things within banking which I think are obsolete long term, mm -hmm. you know, such as how you develop a new IT system. You know, I remember, you know, lots of banks, that take three years yeah. to develop a new IT system. By the time it goes live, nobody needs it anymore. It's out of date. It's yep. out of date, you know. So, so I think those are the things we almost have to almost stop doing, yeah. you know, and move from a very, let's say, waterfall technology into agile, you know, yeah. faster innovation cycles. Yeah. But at the same time, lots of things which we learn, which are very good. You know, in banking, we need to apply to our new fintech, you know, your blockchain um, 
cryptocurrency world as well. Mm. So it's a, it's a balanced, a subtle approach to do the right thing and not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. As sometimes often yes. happens. Um, but you, you, you touch on a really important area around ICOs, which is taking lots of the headlines at the moment. We have our own views on ICOs, having successfully gone through one with Humanic. But what are you seeing with some of the trends within the ICO sector? And is it a, a short-term... Uh, almost like new age, like it was with the whole technology advances, or is this the new way we're going to be investing in businesses going forward? Yes. I mean, I should say first, you know, I'm very bullish on blockchain and I'm very bullish on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So I totally believe that this underlying technology, you know, which we call distributed ledger, is changing our world, will change the way we conduct financial yep. services. Yep. So I'm very bullish on that. Um, at the same time, I think we're in a huge bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, Ether, when you think about, you know, the increase more than 3,000 percentage yep. since year to date. Yep. You know, it's, I think we are in a bubble and the question is, you know, when is it going to burst? And, and it might be next month, it might be in six months time, you know, and there will be lots of money being lost. Mm -hmm. The same way as lots of money and millions have been gained mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of gained by it. Um, so I think that's kind of my, my view is, you know, anybody who wants to enter the sector now, yeah. wants to buy Ether, so Bitcoins now, make sure that you know what you do, you know, that you understand exactly the risks yeah. uh, and that it's money you have, can afford to lose. I think that's, you know, that's a key thing because as an investor, you know, when you think about your overall, let's say, asset allocation model, mm -hmm. you've got money you have to keep you know, safe, yep. you know, which is normally lower return, lower risk, you know, but then you've got money you almost you want maybe to play with, yep. you know, which is your satellite pockets, which should generate more alpha, you mm. know, to your overall portfolio. And that's where I would put in uh, cryptocurrency trading yep. uh, because it's high risk, hopefully high return, but it also might wipe you out. Correct. You know what I mean? You might lose any, anybody who goes in now, you know, at, at 4,300 Bitcoin <laughs> or, or three, you know, more than 300 Good. on Ether. Mm. You just don't know how it will end up at the end of 2017. Yes. So I think that's, that's my overall view in terms of ICOs. You know, I am a big believer in peer-to-peer. So I love the idea that we can trade with each other, you know, we can invest uh, alongside people in all other countries in the world, you know, we remove intermediaries, we remove bureaucracy, and also we empower small startups, we empower companies which might have been ignored, mm -hmm. you know, by uh, traditional ways of accessing funding. Uh, however, you know, lots of ICOs, which we have seen, have been valued way too much. You know, there was, a, it's again, it's another bubble, you yeah. know, an ICO valuation bubble. Uh, and the reason is because you can, you mean, you're able to, to go through an ICO process without any governance. Yeah. You know, so you, you could, you, whatever you tell your investors, nobody's checking that in reality, you know, whatever you do with the money afterwards, again, nobody is actually checking that. No. You know, even if you disappear, you know, the... FCA, the SEC would not get involved because yep. there's no governance around it. Yet, though. Yet, exactly mm. yet. You know, and that's again, that's a huge opportunity. You know, so I, I hope over time, I would love to see ICOs being at the same level as an IPO. You know, it would be amazing. Yep. Totally believe that this should happen. But it's, I think we have to work towards it. You mm. know, that's what my belief is. So I think it's very exciting. You know, I think we are living in a, in a very exciting time where we as individuals really are empowered mm. and we are not anymore, um, I guess, reliant on old infrastructures to give us the power, but we can empower ourselves. I love that. And you talk passionately about we're at the stage where the new Apples or Googles of tomorrow mm. are being created. So that's a real yes. positive. Yes. And the ability for the normal man and his dog to int introduce themselves into the world of investing mm. has been democratised almost. Yes. But then to be safe, make sure that you are doing with money you can afford to lose. So very yes. wise advice. Talk to us about Fintech Circle. What, what's happening now within your business? Because I know you're doing some amazing stuff. The book has been obviously very successful, but there's so much more that you're doing. Yes. I mean, it's, it's true team. And today, actually, we're announcing something very special. You know, what we have seen in the last few years is that there's a huge appetite to learn about Fintech. Mm. Lots of people in banking don't feel that they've got the right information, the right access to these new skill sets, mm. which are required to to thrive in the future world of finance. And so today we announced the Fintech Circle Institute, which will be the first 
global learning platform connecting fintech experts with the best fintech audience to learn from each other. And what this means, you know, for blockchain, for Bitcoin, for ICOs, that we will have lessons, you know, done by experts. So we don't want to go to people who have no understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go to theorists. Yeah. We want to work with people on the front line who can share their expertise within half an hour, within 30, maybe 30 minutes, 60 minutes. So yeah. short lessons, online lessons with our audience of 75,000 people to pass on this knowledge and this expertise. Because at the end of the day, anybody who wants to make sure that their careers is future-proof in finance, has to learn fintech, has to understand blockchain, and has to understand cryptocurrencies. Yes, with the new educational year starting for many students, so many of them aren't even aware of what's actually happening. So yes. it's really encouraging that you've created your own MOOC, as it were, so yes. an online course for, for, yes. for the motor. What, what's your ambition with the course? What do you want to see change? I think what we want to do is we want to give people who are all time poor, mm -hmm. you know, who don't have time to read through all the newsletters which we're getting, you know, who don't have time to sign up for a six months course. Yeah the opportunity to learn on a daily basis. So it might be just you just you watch maybe a 15 minute video or just on the weekend you watch an hour class, mm -hmm. you know, on the FinTech Circle Institute. And this, if you do that on a regular basis, you invest in yourself, you know, and you will be worth more yes. long term. And this is going to add huge traffic to your business. You're going to be very busy over the next yes. couple of months, so I hope you're prepared. Um, what some of the trends that you're seeing in the marketplace? Because it's so rapidly moving. Every day there's a new ICO, there's a new development in some form of technology or another application that blockchain can be applied to. What are some of the things that excite you about the trends of the future? Mm. Uh, it's, it's a great question, Tim. You know, I think I almost see three things, you know, in what we have seen initially, it was fintech. You know, mm -hmm. it was just, now we use fintech as the umbrella term, mm -hmm. but underneath we've got certain verticals. Yep. You know, one is insure tech. So the way our insurance industry is mm -hmm. changing. The other one is wealth tech, yep. which impacts the whole private banking sector, asset management, you know, Rob advice. Mm -hmm. How do we long-term invest? you know and how do we make sure that our investments grow mm -hmm. how can we avoid having no money when we retire do you know this is serious huge challenges issues. Yeah. huge issues in our society mm -hmm. people talk about pension crisis um, you know and hopefully with wealth tech we can educate people to start saving early yeah. you know and make sure that they end up with enough money for also our longer lives you know because we all live longer yep. And I would say the third trend, you know, the third vertical in this, you know, big fintech umbrella is regulatory technology, you know, rec tech. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this comes down, you know, I remember when I worked, you know, in, in all the banks uh, in London or in Hong Kong, you know, one of their key headaches was obviously to comply with regulators globally mm. who all have got different standards. Yeah. You know, some of the regulators are tougher, others are easier on you. And you have to, as a global bank, you have to create a global standard mm -hmm. um, to comply, mm -hmm. you know, in every country you operate in. And nowadays there are reg tech solutions which help you as a bank or as an insurance company to comply at lower costs. And that's great, you know, because when you think about it, all the th millions of pounds and millions of dollars which have been invested mm -hmm. um, to literally uh, comply, you know, fix, you know, fix things quickly, but long term they are just not feasible because everything gets more complex. Now, technology in fintech and rec tech will help, uh, you know, our, our institutions to comply at lower costs. Mm -hmm. And that's a great opportunity for lots of entrepreneurs, you know, to get involved in this area. So you're, very, you're so optimistic. You're infectious. <laughs> you just can't help but be infused by it. So it's, it's great for you. Where can people see you next because you're you're often at conferences you're you're doing a huge amount of talks online where can people see you next what's yes. in the calendar um you know definitely one thing is i'm on twitter mm -hmm. you know under suzanne chisti yep. so i'm very looking forward to connect you know with anybody who wants to reach out um, we've got our website fintechcircle.com mm -hmm. you know where we publish daily new blog posts new insights uh, and then of course our fintech circle institute which is our way of really sharing knowledge, educating and empowering our expert community mm. to share their knowledge. Yep. And that's really good, you know, because in the past, 
we couldn't know what people would have thought, let's say, in Latin America. Yeah. And maybe, or let's look at China. Mm -hmm. You know, China is a good example. There are lots of areas in fintech where China is leading the world. Mm -hmm. So we actually should look at Chinese lecturers teaching us what to do in mm -hmm. some areas, you know, or looking at Finnish or Swedish, you know, technologies whom we would have not have access to. Yeah. So our goal is really to allow people globally to share the knowledge on the Fintech Circle Institute uh, platform mm -hmm. and to make it very very affordable for anybody, you know, to um, learn, um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't require six months commitment either. So that's really our goal. And um, yes, and so I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm very much a people's person, Tim. You know, I so can I'm, tell. I'm, yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm happy to connect. I'm also happy, you know, talking about diversity. You know, mm. I, I love diversity. I think we need to empower more women mm. to enter this space. Mm. You know, we don't have enough at all. Uh, girls, you know, being involved in coding, mm -hmm. um, women at senior positions in organizations, you know, so I think we need to do a lot more to make it more open, you know, our own fintech world. Yeah. Um, and again, that's areas, you know, I'm talking about at conferences. So that's, that's uh, I guess, the areas I really feel passionate about. Mm. Well, it's, it's, you are an amazing ambassador, not just for the fintech sector, for potential women coming in or those mm. existing, but for anybody thinking about the positive nature of yeah. the future of fintech. Suzanne, it's been an absolute pleasure mm. to, to speak to you. We wish you the best of luck with the Institute. We'll be keeping our eyes on, we'll be sending out to all of our viewers. But anything you need, come back and see us. Will you do that? Yes, I do Fantastic. that. Thanks Suzanne. very much, Tim. Great yes, to great to meet you, meet you as well. <laughs>